Welcome back, looters. Today on Drink Your Own Adventure, we have a fun romp called Spooky Thanksgiving. If you are one of our viewers not in America, Thanksgiving is a time of the year where Americans cook turkey and uh, not to bring not to bring down the mood, but uh, there's there's lots of bad stuff there too. So um, we'll see what what kind of take on Thanksgiving this book has. Yeah, but Thanksgiving is much more. So a bunch of people cook turkey, get together people who they kind of like, kind of like. Uh, hope they don't discuss politics. That's a big one. And uh, then they sit. Mostly they just sit around and watch football and fall asleep. Yep. It's that's, uh, that's Thanksgiving. Yeah, and you have to cook for like seven hours ahead of time, yeah, so everyone's yeah. always really cranky. And, and there's only like two people who cook, and so everybody else just gets to sit around while these two people like fuss about everything. And and the people that aren't fussing are generally complaining. Yeah. So with that in mind, yeah. Oh, let me give you a. A shot of our drink for this time. Ooh, it's a uh, it's a pumpkin spice kind of drink because traditionally uh, during Thanksgiving we eat pumpkin pie, or at least some families do. My family never ate pumpkin pie until I was an adult, and then I decided I really liked it, so now I eat it. It's by the way, the drink's very good. Oh, good. The drink is very very good. Let's go over our rules again. Rule number one: if you have to make a choice, we'll take a sip. Rule number two, if you die or get a bad ending, depending on what like year level the, the book is, take a big drink or a gulp. And then rule number three, Carrie and I will decide based on the back of the book, what we think a good rule would be to drink to. So here's the back blurb. Are you ready to meet some Thanksgiving ghosts? Your family has just moved to a big, creaky old house in Plymouth, Massachusetts, the town where the Pilgrims landed many years ago. Oh, we're learning history. No. It's the night before Thanksgiving, and your father has warned you not to peek inside of one of the closets before Thanksgiving Day. I feel like this is a Christmas book that they rethemed because they already had a Christmas book, and they're like, oh no, what's another American holiday? Thanksgiving? Don't peek at your Thanksgiving Day presents. But you can't resist, and when you open the door, oh, this is like a spoiler, out comes a giant turkey, and now it's chasing you. On this night before Thanksgiving, you might need to rescue your little brother. You might. You might need to rescue him. Or you might get to eat with pilgrims at one of the first Thanksgiving feasts. What happens to you on this spooky Thanksgiving depends on the choices you make. Some of your adventures will be scary, some will be exciting, but all of them will be fun. Uh, I will be the judge of that, R.A. Montgomery. What do you think our third rule should be, Carrie? How about any time something gets broken? Okay, sure. Or like, like not, or how about, let's go looser than that. We'll say like, knocked over? Anytime damage is done okay. to an object we'll or place. We'll go with damage. We'll go with damage. That's all right. Good... Read this first. Read now it's first. being demanding. <laughs> it is. It's just like a random house. Most books are about other people. This book is about you! You. This book's not about me. And some strange things that happen on the night before Thanksgiving. What happens to you depends on what you decide to do. Do not read this book from the first page through the last page. Otherwise you'll get <laughs> real, real confused. Instead, start on page one and read until you come to your first choice. This is like if you've never done a Read Your Own Adventure book before. Okay. Are you ready to spend Thanksgiving in a new house that may be haunted? Then turn to page one and good luck. And as always, Carrie and I will switch every time there's a decision to be made. Just in case you were worried that you're gonna have to listen to me the whole time. All right. It's the day before Thanksgiving. You and your little brother, Nick, have just moved into your new home with your parents. Well, I'm glad that you got to move in with your parents. <laughs> They're like, you and Nick get to live in this house by yourself. <laughs> this is Bye. Your house. This is our house. It's a big old house in Plymouth, Massachusetts, the town where the first Thanksgiving was held. I, f I feel like that may have been a rule that we should have chosen every time they the mention the- Plymouth? No, every time they, they say the first Thanksgiving. Oh. Great. Your parents are very glad they could buy such a big house so cheaply. 
I'm, I'm not even gonna go into the fact that the housing market is a joke right now. The price was low because of rumors that the house is haunted. I'm just saying, if you have a haunted house for sale, let me know. <laughs> I'm in the market, especially for a haunted house. Of course, you don't believe in haunted houses or ghosts, but the house is kind of spooky. And this is your first Thanksgiving in your new home, away from your old friends. Maybe the pilgrims felt the same way their first Thanksgiving. A little scared about being in a new place, but excited about new adventures. I'm not even going to touch that. I That's feel like that is... There's nothing scary about oh, Thanksgiving. Oh no, this is... This is going to be not a politically correct book, I feel oh, like. Oh no. All right. The smell of pumpkin pie. This is just foreshadowing based on what I can see the picture to be. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. The smell of pumpkin pie wafts up the attic stairs. Do we live in the attic? Okay. You can live in an attic. I mean, yeah, but if it's a- They're like flowers in the attic where they yeah, all die. Yeah, that's- <laughs> You decide a piece of warm pie is more interesting than a dusty and maybe haunted attic. I agree. You and Nick run downstairs to get some pie, but the pie is still in the oven. You decide to go to your room and read. Wow, we gave up real fast on that. Oh, pie would be great. Pie, even I, add I, I would sentence. prefer I would prefer pie over the dusty attic. Well, I guess I'll go read instead. You pick up a book of ghost stories. Soon you fall asleep. They must not have been very good ghost stories. Sometime later, a sound wakes you. You get up and creep over to the window. On the lawn below, you can see someone standing and looking up. It's an Indian boy about your age. Na Native American boy, your age. He has war paint on his face. He looks like the wooden Indian in the attic, except he isn't wooden anymore. Oh no. Oh no. He motions for you to follow him, then he suddenly disappears. I don't like this book already. So if we decide to follow the Native American boy, turn to page eight. If we decide to tell your parents what you saw, go to page 13. I don't feel like that is gonna be helpful. If you've ever read a Goosebumps book, you will know that parents are useless in They're young pretty. kids' books. They're just, useless. Just the worst. Oh, so we made a choice, so we get to take a drink. Do you have more? Yeah, we can make more. I don't think we're gonna get to that point, but you can have a second one after we're done. Oh, we're gonna get to that point. <laughs> Aries okay. like, I'm gonna kill us. There's, 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 there's a picture. Ooh, this one has a lot of pictures, I've noticed. Picture. I think this one is for younger kids, so there's a lot more pictures and a lot less reading. You decide to follow the little Native American boy. You sneak out the window onto the tree branch and down the tree trunk. You see the... We can't just go out the front door like a normal person? Uh, I guess not. You see the boy running toward the old well. You run after him. He is waiting for you at the edge of the well. Who are you, you ask? He says nothing. You step closer. You notice he has a tomahawk tucked oh, into his belt. The boy climbs over the edge of the well and slides down the rope into the well. I'm sorry if you're... Turn to page 14. This if you're is... Native American, oh. I'm so sorry. This is not... This isn't great. This so... is a product of its time, clearly, and that doesn't make it okay, but oof. Well, it's not... Uh, did, did you make a... No. No? Okay, we're just continuing. Yeah, My bad. it's gonna do it again. You carefully approach the edge and look down. It's pitch black and you can't see a thing. You pull up the rope. At the end is an old bucket full of holes. <laughs> You oh, drop the bucket back into the well and listen to the water splashing. You hear nothing. The well must be dry. You test the rope. It seems fine. Oh no. Don't climb down the hole, me. Oh my god, we're doing it again. Oh, okay, god. now there's a picture again. This is the least make your own choosy. Oh, I know. Choose I'm your not changing any of it. Alright, you take hold of the rope and slide down into the well. You hit the bottom with a thud. It's dark and damp down here. You feel around with your hands. You oh, find an better. opening. It's a tunnel! You crawl you through the tunnel. When you face. reach the inn, you there is an opening to the outside. It's suddenly dark out. You can see the light of a full moon. You stand up. You look right into the face of the boy. Who are you? You ask. My name is... We'll just pretend like it doesn't have a name. Aww. What do you want with me? You ask him. 
Why did you come to my window? To show you the true meaning of Thanksgiving, he oh, says. Oh, no. Suddenly you heard his footsteps coming down a path. This is truly a spooky Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's not good. Oh, boy. Oh, boys. Oh, okay. Hide him, says. <laughs> The two of you duck behind a pine tree. I'm take a drink just because this is bad. It's that's what we should have had the drink on. Ugh. Three people dressed like pilgrims are walking towards you. The man is wearing a tall black hat with a buckle on the front. Shoes. He's, he's black actually pants. in a. He's actually in a local production of The Crucible. <laughs> Long white socks and shoes with buckles. The woman is wearing a plain dark long dress. The little they look scary in the moonlight. They carry muskets, and with them is a little boy. It's Nick! Who's Nick? Your brother. Our brother. Oh. Our little brother is named Nick. And again. Oh, good. We're finally going to get oh, to a thing. God. You watch the pilgrims walk down the path and disappear. Have you gone back in time, you wonder, or is this a dream? Follow me, he says. The the Native American boy. The Native American boy that we're not naming. What are you going to do? Nick may be a pain in the neck sometimes, but he's still your little brother, and he could be in trouble. He did not appear to be in trouble. If you decide to follow the Native American boy, turn to page 30. If you decide to help Nick, turn to page 39. I don't want to do either thing. I know. Can we just go back and talk to our parents? That was, seem gonna, that was seeming like a better help. idea. Okay, I am going to choose... This may be a controversial decision, but I'm going to choose to help Nick just so we don't have to deal with whatever. I know. So we're going to go help Nick. Just. I'm going to get another drink. Just because. Nick is your brother after all, and he may need your help. You decide to follow the pilgrims and, oh, I like how before we were like pretending that they weren't, oh, with these people with buckles on their hats and shoes. You decide to follow the pilgrims and see where they're taking him. Suddenly, I like to think that like 11 year old us in this world, I'm imagining we're 11 and we're like, oh, people dressed up like pilgrims. Nick might be in danger. Like, <laughs> that's, that's a bit of a leap. Suddenly the pilgrims stop at a gate with a hand painted sign of a turkey. The sign says, turkey shoot tonight. The pilgrim, a group of pilgrims stands by the entrance. You hide in the bushes nearby. Show you the picture. I don't really understand why we have decided. The pictures are decent. Like if you're, if you're 11, I don't know why you would be this scared of people dressed as pilgrims. None of these things. In this, mean, the year. Other than, so he'd just be thinking that he's dreaming is what's gonna happen. He's like, gonna think he's still asleep and he's what dreaming. Year was this published? Oh, 1988. This book is as old as I am. <laughs> oh boy, what a what a day and age. Okay, here we go. So we, we're, we're hiding in the bushes, waiting for the, the pilgrims. When Nick looks your way, you wave your arms to get his attention. He looks at you as if he doesn't know you. You wonder what the pilgrims have done to Nick's memory. The pilgrims take Nick inside. You want to help your brother, but you're not sure what to do next. What do you want to bet that this is not actually Nick? And it's just like a little ghostly pilgrim boy who just looks like Nick. <laughs> He's like your, your great, 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 great grandfather or whatever. Okay, so if we want to sneak into the turkey shoot, go to page 34. If we decide to run for help, go to page 36. Well, I know which one I'm not doing. Can we just have a turkey chasing people or something? Right? That, uh, that is what I was hoping that is, for. That is what we were sold we on. We were sold scary turkey chasing. Also, we were never told about the Thanksgiving closet. Where's that's my good, Thanksgiving closet? That's a good point. Where is the Thanksgiving closet in this story? The other, the other first choice we made, apparently. So which one are we doing? All right, uh, we're going to go after the turkeys. Okay, turkey shoot time. When no one is, oh, by the way, it's a picture. Yay, pictures. When no one is looking, you sneak into the turkey shoot and hide behind a log. When no one is looking? They're From all your very hiding distracted. place, you watch several pilgrims with muskets standing around talking. Nick is standing by a large pen where a turkey is caged. 
The turkey is pecking at some corn on the ground. Nick is trying to pull one of the turkey's fe tail feathers. This sounds awful. I signed on the pin the says worst. first prize. So if you shoot a turkey, you get a turkey? Or is the prize getting to shoot a turkey? I don't understand. Well, the prize is you get the first prize. You get prize, the turkey. You get the turkey. But it's a turkey shoot. So presumably you're shooting other turkeys already. I guess so. You see a row of targets, oh no, it is targets, nailed to trees in the oh. front of the men. You are relieved that the men are will be shooting at a target and not at the real turkey that they're then going to kill to eat later. Maybe they'll just keep it as a pet. Pet turkey. Don't, don't do way, that. If you not, live in a place without turkeys, be glad. They are they're, terrible. They're mean. One of my friends says that they are uh, as close as we in North America have two dinosaurs. Because there's like cassowaries and stuff, which are definitely dinosaurs, but the turkey is like the North American version of what dinosaurs would be. They're terrifying. They're and they will chase you. They're not nice. Mm -hmm. A bell clangs. All the men line up, facing the targets. The bell clangs again, and your ears ring from the noise of the rifles. Now's your chance. You stand up and you shout, Nick, over here, run! <laughs> Nick is just like, I like this turkey. <laughs> Nick looks at you. Oh, by the way, there's a picture. In case I didn't show you already. I didn't get a single picture. Uh oh, they're hiding behind a tree. That's they're hiding behind a tree. They're fun and shot festive. At. Nick looks at you strangely. He waves at you. What's he doing? You wonder. This is the time to get away. Oh no! Nick has lifted the latch and locks the gate to the turkey pit. Oh. <laughs> Nick, don't you shout? But Nick can't hear you because of the shooting. A bell clangs and the shooting stops. Reload, says the pilgrim who rang the bell. The turkey takes off across the field where the targets are set up. Nick is right behind it. Your legs have never carried you so fast. You reach Nick and quickly pull him behind a tree as rifle shots explode. Bark flies off the tree with the target is attached to. Stop shooting, someone yells. There are children out there. The pilgrims run to the tree, including the man and the woman you followed earlier. Are you all right? The man asks. D did you get shot? The man asks. So more pictures. The man looks just like your father, but why is your father dressed like a pilgrim? Nick is holding a turkey tail feather crying. Jacob, come here, says the pilgrim woman that the pilgrim woman. This says the pilgrim woman that you follow <laughs> the pilgrim woman. woman. <laughs> she turns to you. What have you done to our son, and why are you dressed in those strange clothes? I followed you to save Nick, you say. Who's Nick? says the program who looks like your father. Save him from what? From a turkey. Yeah, no, that's what I want okay, to know, in too. In this time period, they'd be trying to save him from witches? What What are we, the 11-year-old boy, yeah, worried be, about? We'd be a witch. I don't understand what we were so concerned about. Clearly, they're just like going to a, they were signed up for a community play or something. Suddenly, everything is clear to you. Nick or Jacob is your father's ancestor. You've gone back in time. <laughs> you must be a witch, says the pilgrim woman. I told you. You did, you called it. Other pilgrims gather around you. A witch, someone shouts. You'd better act fast. These pilgrims think you're a witch. No kidding, after Excuse calling me. you a witch twice. You say, pointing behind the crowd of pilgrims, I think somebody is stealing your turkey. All heads turn, and you run for your life. You get back to the tunnel and crawl inside before you see your, they see you. Even on a Thanksgiving taking place hundreds of years before either of you were born, your little brother has somehow managed to get you in trouble. This is not his fault. I this is guess our guess. fault for being the worst. So we big drink. Worst. We're the worst. All right. So, so we're gonna go back to the the choice we didn't make in the first place because we don't go, like this whole storyline. It's it's not handled in a appropriate manner. I feel like. So we're gonna go tell our parents. Like that's gonna. Go I well. want I want the angry turkey breaking things. That's what I want. That's I know. the storyline I have chosen for us. All right. Here we go. You run from your room and down the stairs to tell your parents. Ghosts are a little too much for you to try and tackle alone. I like how that's the reason. We're like, oh, there's a ghost. It must be a ghost. Ah, you need help. And you're- It couldn't just be a boy outside. I mean, he's the only boy in the country. 
<laughs> there's no such there's, thing as neighbors. There's no such thing as Native Americans in Massachusetts. Come on, stop being a racist. Me, you, wait, we need a name for this character. You need help from your parents or even Nick. You dash into the kitchen, but no one's there. On the table is a bowl of popcorn with Nick's buttery fingerprints all over the outside. You reach in to grab some popcorn, but the bowl is nearly empty. There are only some uncooked kernels on the bottom. We gave up that search for someone really fat. We have like the shortest attention span. We're like, <laughs> pie, I guess I'll go read. <laughs> popcorn. Let's never mind that, you know, we think we saw a ghost, even though we're delusional. The door of the kitchen closet is open a crack. Pantry? Not supposed to be open. Kitchen closet. You haven't used this old closet yet. Your father said not to open it until he had a chance to clean it out. But now someone, or something, has opened it. Maybe it's a secret passage. Could this be the surprise your parents promised you? even though they haven't cleaned it out. <gasps> it's a million spiders. <laughs> you open the closet all the way and step inside. The closet seems to be the size of a small room. Suddenly you feel a very cool draft. Then the door slams shut. Okay, Nick, you say, quit playing games. You wait for Nick to open the door, but you hear nothing. Did it latch? It just closed. Like you can open it's the door. It's one of those refrigerators that <laughs> when you shut the freezer. door, it locks. <laughs> We're just stuck in here. There's a little bit of light coming from an old window along the back wall, but it's still very dark. You're starting to get impatient with your brother's prank. You sense a movement in the room. Something's in here with you. Now you can smell it. It smells like a wild animal. Did it take a poop in the closet? What is... How do you know it smells like an animal? All animals smell different, I feel like. You feel something nudge the back of your neck. Goosebumps run up the back of your arm. That isn't funny, Nick. But if that was Nick, then who closed the door? Slowly you turn around. Is Nick playing tricks with you? Dressed up as a very large turkey? Or are you staring into the glassy, beady eyes of a turkey ghost? It couldn't be an actual turkey. It's either Nick or a ghost. Why would you have a live turkey in your house the day before Thanksgiving? That's the surprise. All right, if you try to... This is gonna get really dark for a second, so I'm sorry. Oh, I, uh, I'm, I'm opposed to anything going dark. So, um, I apologize, but the two choices are, if you try to wring this turkey's neck, turn to page 19. Or if you try to escape through the window, turn to page 45. And here's a picture of the turkey ghost. It's a, uh, it certainly is spooky. It's a spooky Thanksgiving. We think it's a ghost. Why would we try to ring its, ring neck. its neck? If we think it's Nick, why would we try to ring its neck? Okay, so let's say you're in this situation. What would you actually do? I would open the door. There's that. <laughs> I don't know that. Like, it said that the door closed. It never said that it locked, right? I don't think you could open it. We didn't try. But you It's know, like, try to open the door, go to page two. <laughs> but, I mean, there's such a thing as, you go a long way before you wring its neck. You, know, you, you, you <laughs> like, push it away, turkey, right? you punch it, you... Throw, throw some Bisquick in its face. I mean, if you fail to wring its neck, it's gonna get really mad. Fight let's, or flight? Let's fight. All right. We're gonna go with fight. We're hoping for a bad ending. Yes. <laughs> We're also hoping for broken items. Yes. <laughs> oh, by the way, there's more popcorn now. Oh, good. It's not more just popcorn. a couple of- Oh, it was Nick who did it to us. Maybe. Nick's under the table. Maybe he just heard us and he was gonna like try and pull a prank, but then we did that instead. You reach out and grab the turkey's neck. Gobble, gobble, gobble. A chill runs up your spine. Ooh. Even Nick can't make such a convincing turkey noise. That was very convincing. Gobble, gobble, gobble. gobble. This isn't Nick, you realize. Help! You run backwards as the angry turkey charges you. You hit the door with your back. The turkey nearly 
upon you. So the door swings open. Really? That means it's not locked. That's what I'm saying. We didn't even try the door. You know, Dad told you. We're not the cleverest you, person in all of Flanders. No. You know, Dad told you not to go in there, Nick says, standing in the doorway. Because that's what he should be doing right now. Scolding us and not going, why is there a giant turkey chasing you? Nick turns pale as you run out of the closet, followed by a very angry turkey. Ah! Nick yells as you and the turkey stampede out of the closet. I'm glad Nick that they added in the ah! Underneath the table, you run around behind it. The turkey is running wild in the kitchen. It's knocking things over. Oh, good news! It's knocking things over. We're counting Left it. and right. Yes, I know. You'd better do something right away. If you try to get the turkey to go down the basement stairs, turn to page 33. Why is the turkey not in the basement already? If you're gonna stick it in the we basement, or you stick it in the turkey, stick it in a random closet. It still could be a ghost. I'm, I'm holding out for turkey ghosts. Just wait. If you try to get the turkey to run outside. <laughs> okay, so here's, here's my question. Um, Let's say we, we do convince it to go down the basement stairs somehow. What then? Do we let it starve a slow, painful death? Because that seems mean. It's but be then dead again, tomorrow we're, anyway. we're a very. Well, how? <laughs> are we assuming that dad has his pilgrim musket still? Like, how, how are we. It's not how you can do Well, clearly we can't do that. Okay. So. I'm gonna try and get the turkey to run outside. Yes. Where the turkey should have been in the first place. Alright, here we go. You have to find a way to get the turkey outside before it totally wrecks the kitchen. You notice the popcorn bowl on the kitchen table. There's still some uncooked kernels of corn at the bottom of the bowl. Even Nick wouldn't eat those. Stupid Nick. <laughs> Nick's the worst. I mean, look at all the damage Nick has done. He's, you know, let a turkey out. He's, he's uh, tried to fight the turkey. <laughs> tried to fry the turkey. He's I mean, Nick's the worst. <laughs> he's dressed up like a pilgrim and called himself Jacob. You grab the kernels, just avoiding the pecking beak of the enraged turkey, and throw a few on the floor. The turkey pounces on the corn. That is not a word that I would normally consider turkeys to do. Pouncing. The turkey pounces on the corn, gobbles it up, and looks for more. Then it sees you have more, and charges again! Turn to page 46. You run out of the kitchen door and into the backyard. The turkey is following you. You run to the well and put, oh, oh, and pull on the rope until you hold the bucket in your hands. Just when the turkey catches up to you, you toss the rest of the corn inside the bucket. The turkey jumps inside just as you planned, and you quickly lower the bucket to the bottom of the well. Just then, <laughs> oh my god, this is not letting the turkey outside. This is, like, this is really bad. We are not kind to animals. <laughs> like, I feel like Magic of the Unicorn Kid was dumb, but meant really well. I feel like this kid is dumb and does not mean well. Okay. We just uh, send, we're just going to send the turkey back in time to the time of the yes. pilgrims, where he's going to get shot, shot by a musket. <gasps> he's the, tur the turkey in oh. the first prize. <laughs> oh, it all comes together, full circle. <gasps> oh, Spooky so Thanksgiving. So much explained. All right. Just then, you hear your parents' car in the driveway. They've returned from town where they have been shopping. Their hands are loaded with shopping bags full of food for your Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. Did they buy a turkey? You run over to tell them what's been happening while they were gone. You try to tell them everything at once. How did, how do we do that? Turkey! Dead. Turkey well! Well. Turkey well closet. Drowned. No, there's no water in the I well. I know. But they don't understand what you're saying. Finally, you just point to the well. Ghost turkey! My foot! Ghost turkey, my friend. Okay, we've proven it's not a ghost turkey. Your father gets a flashlight from the car and shines it down the well. Ghost turkey, my foot, your dad says, laughing. Oh, okay. He's like, I don't believe you. Ghost turkey, my foot. That is... 
a really not a thing that people say saying. anymore. Okay, ghost turkey, my foot. Your dad says, laughing. That's our Thanksgiving dinner. That was the surprise I had for you hiding in the closet. A real turkey for Thanksgiving. The end. I want to call that a bad ending just because that was bad writing. So I guess we try to put him in the basement. Put him in the basement. There we go. Page 33. Put him in the basement. Try to. Try to. My hope is that the kid gets eaten. That's what I would consider oh, a good ending. Oh, it's going to be an end. All right. Yes. You think of a way to lure the turkey down into the basement stairs. I know. Popcorn. Yes! <laughs> you quickly grab the popcorn bowl that's sitting on the table. You take a handful of the corn kernels at the bottom of the bowl and throw them on the floor. The turkey jumps on the floor and gobbles up a few of the kernels. When it finishes them, it charges at you again. You open the door to the basement and throw the rest of the kernels down the basement stairs. The turkey dashes down after them. Crash! Hey, you hear your father's voice? He comes up from the basement and walks into the kitchen. His hair is full of popcorn and turkey feathers. Dad was the turkey the whole time? That turkey was supposed to be a surprise. Oh. I was hoping it was Who dad let the turkey, turkey out of the closet? Who? Who? So Who? it's not Who? a ghost turkey after all? Ghost turkey, my foot. Well, your father asked you again. Nick, you say, smiling innocently. Boo. I guess at least in that one we didn't accidentally murder a turkey. No, they're going to eat him for Thanksgiving. Yeah, so dad will murder the turkey. Dad's going to murder the turkey. By the way, that's quite a job, which means he should, it's since Thanksgiving's yeah, tomorrow, he, he should have that. already taken care of all that. Or at least tonight. Well, because you still have to brine it and oh, all yeah. of that, well, too. assuming he's, this is 1988. They're not brining a turkey in 1988. He's supposed to pluck all those feathers. Oh, I'm aware. Okay. All right. So we're, we're with the turkey in the closet, and we're going to try and escape through the window instead of fighting him. Here's the turkey chasing us to the window. All right. You decide not to take any chances with this turkey and make a dash for the window, but it won't open. It's stuck. The turkey charges at you. You push at the window with all your strength. It opens. You squeeze through and fall to the ground outside. Just when you think you're safe, you hear something behind you. The ghost turkey is coming through the window. You run as fast as you can for the well and hide behind it. Wells are Back round. To the well again. There's only like three set pieces in this story. That's a good point. You sit quietly behind the well, catching your breath. It would be an easy play to produce. You hope the ghost turkey can't hear you. When you think it's safe, you sneak a peek over the top of the well wall. A giant ghost turkey is looking right at you. Wait, a giant ghost turkey. Implying that we think there might be more than <laughs> one giant ghost turkey. A giant ghost turkey is looking right at you. Gobble, gobble! Ah! You scream as you run in terror back into the house. But the ghost turkey is coming through the door after you. Okay, so this is a male turkey. Oh, no. You run upstairs and climb the ladder into the attic. You close the hatch door behind you. You should be safe now. But you feel another wave of terror as the hatch door creaks open. The head of the turkey comes into sight. The turkey has opened the attic door. <laughs> it must be a ghost turkey because turkeys don't have thumbs. You hide behind the wooden Native American. We have a wooden Native American. Then slip the Native American's tomahawk out of its belt. What? Not all Native Americans have tomahawks, and I would say that most wooden statues of Native Americans probably should not have actual axes. But maybe that's just me. Maybe he's selling cigars. You hope tomahawks will work on ghost turkeys. Through the darkness in the attic, the ghost turkey approaches you. Are you kids playing in the attic? You hear your father's voice. Dad, up here, help! You scream. 
Your father's head appears through the hatch doorway. He looks at the ghost turkey. All right, your father says. Whoever went into the closet has to do the dishes for a week. That turkey costume was supposed to be a surprise. We're watching, oh, we're marching in the Thanksgiving Day Parade tomorrow. Aw, Dad, says Nick, removing the turkey head from the rest of the costume. I was only kidding around. The end. That was one of the semi-decent endings. The other one isn't with the Native Americans, is it? I think so. So there are two endings we haven't read. And how much make a bet they're both in the Native American section? Oh yeah, definitely. Because that's the only part we haven't done yet, I think. Is the <gasps> probably... And they both look like they're good endings. Okay, if you want to follow the Native American okay. boy, page, page 30. 30. Oh, here we go. So there's this. Mm. Nick didn't look scared, you think? You decide to follow the Native, the, American, the Native boy. American boy. Soon you come to a large clearing where a campfire is burning. Indians dressed in a deerskin and dancing in a circle around the fire. An old medicine man shakes his rattle made from deerskin and bones. Three Native Americans are beating on drums. Page 37. This is all very exciting to watch, but it's scary, too. Because is we're a tiny white why, boy why in the Why is it 80s? scary? I don't know. The old medicine man suddenly Racism. stops shaking his rattle. The, the Native Americans stop dancing. The Braves stop beating their drums. What are they doing, you ask the boy? Dance of the deer. He answers, deer will now come. All at once, you hear the rumble of hooves. The earth shakes. Then you see them, a hundred it's of, like the bat signal, hundreds but of for deer, deer run into the clearing. An old buck, his horns long and jagged, leads the rest. Page 20. Oh, well that's where that picture came in. There's this picture. Someone puts a bow and arrow in your hands. You realize that you are no longer a kid in bed reading ghost stories, but a hunter in the night. Now, the Native American boy says... You notch an arrow and pull the bow back. You release the string and an arrow flies straight. The big buck falls. Oh. You are excited but sad too. Me too. Now you do understand the meaning of Thanksgiving. No. The boy asks, the deer must die so we can live. Okay. No, I get that. He asks that? <laughs> he asks, the deer must die so we can live. That's a question? Uh -huh. And so other deer can live too. A few must no, die. No, no. Do, do you understand the meaning of Thanksgiving? He asks. Oh. And okay. then he tells you the deer must die. Yeah, so we can live. So we can live. So which, like, live. fair, but also the meaning of Thanksgiving is that pilgrims came and. Oh. Come on, Alex. And so other deer can live too. A few must die so the rest can live and grow strong. And so we can live and grow strong. We take the meat to our village and share it with our tribe. Before we go, we leave food for the deer. This way we share life with them too. This is the meaning of Thanksgiving. You return to his village and have a delicious Thanksgiving meal of corn, squash, beans, turkey, and venison. Oh, that sounds nice. It's closer to the original Thanksgiving, but there was no turkey. It was venison and... There was lobster at the original Thanksgiving. Lobster? Mm-hmm. Because it was in Massachusetts, there's a lot of, like, lobster-ing, mm -hmm. and that was it something depend, that they it could, depend, It would like, depend on which tribe, I mean, there's, there's the water tribes, yeah. and then there's the That was, tribes. like, in one of the very first Thanksgivings, mm -hmm. uh, they had, they had lobster. So there's a fun fact. After the meal, the boy leads you back to the tunnel. I had no decisions. <laughs> that was just it. You're like, yes, let's do it. And the Native American boy is like, all right, shoot a deer, then go home. Bye. I know, but I'm saying... How do we get the other one? Oh no. That was one of the best nights of my life, you say to the boy. Murder. You wave goodbye and crawl through the tunnel. Soon you are climbing up the rope and out of the well. It's dark here, too. Now you dust off yourself off and cross the moonlit yard to your house. All the lights are out. Everyone must be asleep. You are too excited to go back to sleep. You decide to wake up Nick and tell him about your night. You go into his room, but he isn't there. Nick's like, you go F into the off, kitchen, I'm he tired. isn't there either. You search the house, even the attic, but he's nowhere to be found. It's a Thanksgiving miracle. 
You go back to your room and look out the window at the well. You wonder if you should go back. That's how it ends. I wouldn't say that that's a good ending. No. That's a creepy ending. That was the spookiest one so far. So what did we not do? Now we're just cheating. Well, we don't know what we didn't do. So to get the last ending for you, our viewer, we're gonna- Cause this has been such a great book oh, that we're boy. gonna do it this way. Mark all. Okay, if you decide to run for help at the turkey shoot. Let me see something. Why? Did you see the did you see the sick guy? The sick boy? Yeah, that's part of this. Is that's ending. part of that story? Yeah. Okay. So uh we looked and the choice that we forgot to make was instead of sneaking into the turkey shoot, we're running and looking for help once we see the ghost pilgrims. Okay. So we go to page thirty six. Back to thinking our parents are gonna help us. <laughs> Useless. You'll need some help to get Nick out of this mess you decide. We still don't know what the mess is. If you forgot, we saw our brother dressed as a pilgrim with our mom and dad dressed as pilgrims and we're like, oh, Nick's in trouble. You run down the path through the woods. Despite the chilly night air, sweat is dripping down your forehead. Help, you croak. Your throat is sore and your voice is weak. Why? I'm too tired to run, you think to yourself. Better try flying. This one is a this one is a dream. Because we've decided we're gonna try flying. You raise your arms and fly into the air. The feeling of flight is so exhilarating. You feel so much better flying in the cool night air. You join some seagulls and drift on air currents for a while. The sun is coming up. In all the excitement of flying, you've almost forgotten about Nick. You better try to find some help. We're the worst. So Whenever I'm in a bad situation and I'm like looking for someone and I can't find them fast enough, the first thing I think is maybe I, maybe I should try and see if I finally developed the ability to fly. <laughs> that would certainly be helpful. <laughs> you fly over an old fashioned wooden sailing frigate anchored just off the coast. You see the name Mayflower painted on the side of the ship. You hover over the village. A house looks familiar to you. You glide down to the house and through an open window. It's probably our house. How funny would it be if we flew into our ghost house and there was the turkey just like waiting for you? Like, I see you've returned. So, the Mayflower's there. Would our house be built yet? Apparently. Okay. Well, maybe it's just like doing the rounds, you know? Like they dropped That's off what the pilgrims. The Mayflower's and just been just doing the rounds for centuries. You see your family dressed in weird pilgrim clothing. Well, I mean, like, the ship didn't stop existing once it landed. This could For be, like... centuries. This could happen, like, two or three... Well, this is our dream, Carrie. We've gone back in time in our dream. Because it's a familiar house that is not our house. You see your family dressed in weird pilgrim clothing sitting around a bed. Even Nick is sitting there with funny-looking buckles on his shoes. It should have been every time we read the word buckle. <laughs> teasing your cat with a piece of yarn. Even your cat is there as a ghost cat. Seriously? You're almost, oh, you are surprised to see yourself lying in bed. You almost fly away. I'm over here, you yell, but no one seems to hear you. Then you open your eyes. Your mother drops her knitting ball. You are surprised to see tears in her eyes. The fever has broken, your father says. Even Nick seems happy to see you. We must give thanks, your father says. Did I miss Thanksgiving? You ask. What day is it? Today is Thanksgiving, child. Oh my god, it's a Christmas carol. Your mother says, we are happy to see that you are well again. Wait, if we opened our eyes, did we wake up as our ghost self? Is that what's happening? I'm very confused. It's a Christmas carol. It's Thanksgiving, praise, child. Praise no. be that it's no, still Christmas Day. And run can, and, and fetch me a turkey. Fetch a turkey and we'll send one down to Bob Cratchit's house. <laughs> Outside your house, preparations are made for the Thanksgiving feast. The Native American boy sits beside you. Ta oh, we're just better now. We're, don't worry. We, we were only a little sick. We got better. Tables are set out, fires are built, and the food is cooked. The men shoot at targets marked on trees. Miles Standish is the best shot. I thought you needed to know that, said the author. He's like, but who's going to be the best shot? Miles. The kids are playing a game called Stool Ball, similar to Croquet. 
Nick is cheating as usual. <laughs> so much shade. I think I must have dreamed the future, you say to the Native American boy, still dazed by the event. I was right here in Plymouth, but years from now, I was almost sorry to come back. It's fun to fly. Native Americans believe that all life is just a dream within a dream, the boy says. Sometimes that happens when we are very sick. He throws his tomahawk at a target on the tree. Stop it. We should have drank every time they said the word tomahawk. Tomahawk. Stop it. Was I in your dream? Of course you say. Good. <laughs> Good, because otherwise... The Thanksgiving celebration lasts for three days. Ooh, it's like the Coachella of Massachusetts. Well, that was true. It, I think it lasted three days. You share food with your family, your friends, and the Native Americans. Your father, William Bradford... Sit next to... Is that like the Bradford Exchange? I, I don't know. Is it? I I don't know. That's a good question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess up this name and I'm very sorry. I apologize, is just what I'm saying. So your father, William Bradford, sits next to Massasoit, chief of the Wampanoag Indians, Native Americans. You eat venison, duck, goose, eels, white bread, cornbread, leeks, and watercress. For dessert, there are wild plums and dried berries. What a Thanksgiving! The end. And I think that's that's the good ending. We did it. Uh, and then there is there's a little bit about the author and the illustrator, but this one does not have uh, what was life like in Flanders in the back of it. <laughs> so this one is not a documentary. But it has all the other stuff as a documentary. It yes. should be a documentary. All the tomahawks. Should be a documentary. Oh boy. So um, that was spooky Thanksgiving. That was awful. It was so bad. So bad. I do not recommend. Oh my no. 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 So um, thanks for watching. Oh. If you're in uh, America, happy Thanksgiving, I guess. Uh, and I feel like we need to donate something to a local Native American uh, reservation or group or something just as a as a i'm sorry so um i will link some something in the in the comments here please go check it out do some actual good not this this is awful not good My foot!